David Sinclair has made some changes to his supplement protocol in 2025. Today, I'm going to share with you some of those changes to his daily routine. Over the years, Harvard scientist David Sinclair has been a controversial figure. But since the publication of his best-selling book, Lifespan, he's influenced millions like myself to make lifestyle changes, and many have adopted his own supplement-taking protocol to various degrees. While no one can promise you'll get results following David Sinclair's advice, I I can show you my own before and after pictures since learning about him and embarking on my own longevity journey. Personally, it's been a life-changing experience and I'm eternally grateful for it. By the way, my own supplement protocol is listed in the description below this video, along with the discount code and links to the supplements I take. While I don't take everything Dr. Sinclair does, I was greatly influenced by him when deciding to take things like NMN, resveratrol, Physetin, spermidine, omega-3, and vitamins D3 and K2. And before I get into it, be sure to bang that subscribe button to support my efforts in bringing you these types of longevity updates. Now, according to published interviews in 2025, Dr. Sinclair made some adjustments to his own protocol. First up, Professor Sinclair now includes two grams of taurine in his routine. He says this is largely due to a 2023 study in science that found taurine supplementation could extend the median lifespan of mice by up to 12% and improves health span in multiple species. Research suggests taurine is vital for protecting mitochondria from decay and also supports heart health and reduces inflammation. Next is the addition of rapamycin. This is a prescription drug, not an over-the-counter supplement. Sinclair has confirmed he takes rapamycin intermittently, though he hasn't shared his exact dose or frequency. Rapamycin has been shown to trigger autophagy, a state of cellular cleanup and repair, which is beneficial for longevity. As this is a prescription drug, it absolutely requires medical supervision. There are known side effects when taking rapamycin. I myself don't currently take prescription drugs of any kind. His third addition is potentially a reintroduction, alpha-lipoic acid, or ALA. Sinclair is reportedly taking around 300 milligrams of ALA. This antioxidant, which supports mitochondrial function, was part of his stack in the past, and it seems that he has now returned to it. Research suggests ALA may also help activate longevity pathways like CERT1. It may work well with other core parts of his protocol, like NMN and resveratrol, to support cellular energy. It is important to note you can also get ALA from foods such as as broccoli, carrots, potatoes, and red meat. Since Sinclair recently has gone fully vegan, this could help explain why he's again taking ALA. Sinclair has also started taking berberine before meals. Berberine is a plant-based compound known for its effects on metabolic health, especially blood sugar management. It functions in ways similar to metformin, a prescription drug Sinclair has taken for years. He has mentioned that he now often substitutes berberine for metformin, partly to avoid some of the gut-related side effects of metformin and its potential to blunt the benefits of exercise. Berberine is not on my daily supplement list. However, at times when I'm consuming more sugar than usual, I do take a capsule of berberine from Do Not Age as well. The biggest shift in his protocol would be quercetin. For years, quercetin was a key part of his senolytic routine, taken with fisetin to clear out dysfunctional zombie cells. However, Sinclair has indicated he's now focused primarily on fisetin and has largely discontinued regular quercetin use. The reason seems to be emerging science suggesting quercetin might interfere with certain DNA repair pathways, while fisetin may be a more effective senolytic without the same potential downsides. While I still take quercetin, I do megadose a couple days a week with fisetin, and on those days I skip quercetin. I've also noticed I have quite a bit more stamina for exercise on the days I take fisetin, so this shift in his focus does doesn't really surprise me. Dr. Sinclair has recently reiterated that he also continues taking the following NMN, resveratrol, TMG, spermidine, vitamins D3 and K2, 
and omega-3 fish oil. NMN is always the subject of a lot of discussion concerning David Sinclair, and he continues to post information in studies that tout its health and longevity benefits. In response to the recent decision by FDA that it does meet the definition of a dietary supplement, citing against one of Sinclair's own companies, Metro Biotech, Sinclair warns people to make sure they are taking a third-party tested NMN from a reputable supplier. I personally only take NMN from Do Not Age Org, who also supplies many clinical researchers with NMN and other supplements. Other notable longevity steps Dr. Sinclair takes are his focus on a primarily vegetable-rich diet, emphasizing getting quality sleep, stress management through meditation, and frequent exercise. Thanks for watching.